Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is for you. My name is Derva Zarak here at Zarak Creations, and welcome to this episode of my knitting and fiber arts related podcast. Um, today is going to be a kind of classic podcast episode, um, and I'm going to try and keep it relatively short. Uh, I almost have a finished object, which I will then <laughs> wear in just a minute. Um, I don't know whether the best way to weave in ends when you block, this is lace, um, is to weave in the ends and then block or block and then weave in the ends. I found that sometimes when I weave in the ends and then block, um, the ends come loose. So I could weave in the ends and then, and leave it long, and block, and then trim any ends afterwards. But the other thing is that I am going to try, and if I need to, um, I got we're just gonna be all over today. I got some needle felting tools. Um, so if I need to, this is a, a wool. Uh, if I need to, I'm gonna needle felt that little end in. And let's see. So we're starting with, I guess we're starting kind of with acquisitions today. <laughs> Since this finished object is not really finished yet. And some of my acquisitions, um, my acquisitions are all notions and they are all um, gifted. So I got this super cute little pair of scissors. I actually keep them in here. Um, so they are open, I've used them, but I, I keep them in the little package um, just to keep them from snagging or um, snagging stuff or getting um, like pokey through the sides of the knitting bag. So cute. So I'm going to use these right now. Unfortunately. Ooh, very sharp. Uh, I am keeping this end. So true to my goal, I am. Um, I was going to put all my ends in a jar and um, I didn't have one handy, but I did have this cute little clutch. Um, I'm not a purse person very much. Um, I'm like, I need a giant like craft bag with me at all times. And so um, like tiny little purses don't get a lot of use, but I like, I love it. Look how cute. Uh, it comes with a little strap. So this guy goes in here. He's got some friends in there. Um, and I'm hoping to um, get this going. So I actually have some lace thread. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll actually, th this I think will be my um, warp or what? Weft? I need to look up weaving terms. <laughs> It'll be my uh, my strings that I'm going to weave into, if that makes sense. And I'll look up what that is supposed to be because I knew at one point, but don't know now. So acquisition, working on goals. Okay, so these little scissors are my first acquisition. They are super cute. They are by, by HRTC, stainless steel scissors, European classic style, novel style, and exquisite decoration, sharp edge used with care. Um, they don't have like a, it doesn't sound like they have a particular like style name. Uh, my next acquisition and everything's below me. I apologize. Is this little needle felting kit by Mavis. I have, again, I've also opened this and um, it's just the needles. I don't have any roving or anything. I'm gonna kind of just use what I have at the moment, but I have small, small, medium and large needles. There's a larger, um, needle tool and a single needle tool. So this is kind of cool. You open it up, the one needle is in there. You flip it around. Oh, there is a way to hold it, I think. Oh, maybe not. That just holds the needle, not itself. So there's your one, one needle if you need very fine work. 
um, more needles if you are working in a bigger piece and then small, medium, large needles. I'm excited about that. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what type of like needle art, felt that art I want to start with. I don't have a project in mind, but I am very excited. Um, I am going to use it for things like um, steaking and using and felting my steak. Why can't I close that now? Struggling this morning. So, needle felting needles. Uh, what do we have next in the goodie bags? Oh, this one was fun. I posted my Instagram about these already. I got these little, let me pull them off. These little needle stoppers. So, this was a little goat. Uh, I also got actually, I've never had these before. Uh, I got a bunch of needle stoppers um, in different, they're all, these ones are all in different sizes. Uh, and I'm especially excited to be able to use these on some of my projects that start with like double pointed needles or continue on double pointed needles. So that's what these are for. But then my friend sent me, sent me these ones and they're so cute. And you can put them on um, like, I guess either the head the hole goes all the way through, so you can put them on the on the head or on the feet. Oh, so cute! She was sneaky because she showed me these. What was it? Um, she works in a yarn in a yarn store and sent me a picture of these and was like, "Oh, aren't these cute?" And I was like, "What? Those are adorable." Where, what are they? How do I get them? What are the, what types of shapes are they? And then we like chatted about it. Um, and I totally forgot to like ask for a link or something. It's like, oh, those are cute. I love the, these ones. There's goats, there's like little penguins. Um, and then she sent them to me and that was so sweet. Uh, along, so those are stitch stoppers. Um, from Fox and Pine Stitches, Fox and Pine Stitches and Co. Uh, I guess you can also find them in some local yarn shops, which is great. That's awesome. And then she also sent me these adorable stitch markers from Ad Knits. They all have little, I've, I've used one, so there's only four here, but it came, came with five. Um, they all are a little, um, like fall themed, nature inspired, little ornament style stitch markers and super cute. I am so excited for those. Um, were there any other acquisitions? I also got a gift card to get more yarn <laughs> because I need more yarn. Um, so I'm probably gonna, um, I, I don't have any mohair and I've never used any mohair and, um, I'm kind of curious to try a small project. So I think I might buy some mohair. Um, I also, I gotta weave in my other end here. So I'm gonna do that while we're talking. Um, I also, did I get anything else? Knitting related, yarn related. What's this one? I guess this this counts. I if you've watched my goals video, you saw that I am taking a bobbin lace class. I also got this book on bobbin lace, um, and this this is super cool because this goes through um, kind of the history of bobbin lace, um, and then also does talk about some techniques and has some cool drawings and stuff. Uh, I do have, I have the tools themselves to start, but really excited to have a book uh, of instructions as well, and then I am taking a class. Um, so hopefully that will feel a little less intimidating. I don't know, it's just so beautiful that um, I'm like, how do you, how do you even do that? Um, and it's so kind of mesmerizing to watch when people really know what they're doing and just kind of like do all these crosses. And, and I know it's, it's actually fairly, 
I would say some of the, the techniques are simple. There's only like two, I think, if I'm understanding correctly, there's only two different ways that you move the bobbins, um, but obviously infinite combinations and numbers of bobbins um, to get to super complex and super beautiful um, finished works. So, I mean, I was really hoping that I could say the word finished works and then moved on to <laughs> finished objects and be done with this one, but it's gonna take me just a second. It's been really snowy here, which is both kind of cool and also kind of annoying because it's been busy at work and I can't just sit in it all day, but I want to sit in it all day. <laughs> so that's kind of what's been going on personally. All right, <laughs> cutting the final thread. Careful not to get my fingers. All right. My finished object is the Gamayoon bird. So this is the one that I've been working on for quite some time. I've had lots of progress update, updates. Um, I didn't, it's supposed to have kind of a lace, oh, what are we doing here? Um, it's supposed to have a crocheted edge um, bind off at the top that that gets kind of like um, gathered and then has um, like a loop between some of the gathers. So it, it both kind of brings the the fabric together and bunches in and then echoes this larger um, pointed lace pattern on the bottom on the top. <sighs> I ran out of yarn, so, so I didn't do that. Um, so what I did was um, I did a like knit three together bind off. So there were kind of some some places where it made sense, like knit three together, knit three together, knit one, knit three together. So and then binding those off as you go to get a similar um, kind of grouping. Uh, but a, a smooth edge. And I'm glad that I did in some respects. I would have liked to have tried the crocheted edge. But um, also, this took me two sessions to block. I had to block the shape first, and then I had to block out all of these little points. Um, and I ran out of I ran out of, I ran out of space on the blocking mats to do both at the same time, I, which may, just means I need more blocking mats because something like a sweater is gonna be a pain. Though I probably wouldn't block a sweater in the same way. Um, yeah, here we go. Finished object today. All right, Yummy and Bird. That's all I have for finished objects. <clears throat> it's been a little bit, like I said, busy at work. Um, I've had some personal time where um, I'm just playing with the kids and hanging out. They had kind of Christmas break, if you will, as well in there. Um, so this is the only finished object. I have two works in progress to share that are new. So I have started the uh, Rose Window Beanie first one. This is in the adult medium size. So this is a top down construction. And I love seeing that window start to show up. So there's kind of the points of the window. And then I'm also starting to get the little quatrefoil. Um, you can see it down there a little bit better. <clears throat> this is out of Stroll. Um, fingering in black from Knit Picks and Chroma fingering in Lupine. Um, I'm hoping this is mostly pinks and purples. It does have a blue towards the end and if I get to that I might cut it out. Um, and that's just a personal preference for this particular gift recipient. Um, 
she's a very pink pinks and purples type of type of gal and I think she'll appreciate the more warm colors <clears throat> but it's beautiful when that comes together the other work in progress that I have started is where's my little goat took my goat off <laughs> is I have started the dark academia <laughs> dark academia sweater by Sharon Hartley. I am obsessed in love, just flabbergasted by this color pattern. So this is a top down circular, circular look, circular, circular yoke sweater. Thanks for sticking with me on that one. Um, with all over color work. <clears throat> all right, so I just have to like, for just a second, chat about this one because this is my first design and this Dark Academia sweater, when you see the whole thing, starts with some similar feeling um, color motifs. And so for hers to me looks like the kind of ceiling um, arches. These look like the ceiling arches. And then it gets into a smaller portion where you actually have like the full round windows at the bottom and then some like doors at the bottom. And so our patterns are very different. Um, but like I, I did this design in, uh, I think I published it in April of last year, 2022. And I so badly want a sweater with this type of pattern. And then she released this one. And I was like, I don't have to do it. I don't have to grade it. I don't have to. <laughs> I could just, I could just make this <laughs> pattern and this thing exists and it's beautiful. And um, part, that's kind of part of my motivation for design is like, I just want certain patterns and things to exist in the world and I saw this one I was like I must have it I love it I must make it immediately I made myself wait um so I was trying to clear the needles by the end of the year which I didn't do um so I made myself wait until the 27th and then I cast this on for um the bougie sweater sweatshirt knit along um which is hosted by Casey at Young Folk Knits. Sorry, Ugh. my brain is not working quite <clears throat> quite well. It's morning for me. Um, so this is out of gloss, Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. They are both bear yarns. Um, and so the white is the true bear and then B-A-R-E, not B-E-A-R. Um, and then the purple color is uh, hand dyed by myself. I am not alternating skeins. I don't mind color pulling. That doesn't bother me at all. So that's the story. And I'm sticking to it. Whoops, finished objects. Acquisitions. That's kind of it today. Short and sweet and simple. So if you like this type of content, if you want to see what I'm working on, um, if you want to see what I'm designing, oh, I guess I should say that. Um, I have two designs that I released earlier last week, right after um, my yearly wrap up video. And um, the first one, I don't have either of them with me. Both of them are gift knits. So the first one is called the Blitz Art Hat, um, which is a top down construction that uses um, a fisherman's rib technique but it's not it's not brioche like true brioche where you have to work the same row twi twice um, but it's a, a take on fisherman's rib um, and does some really fun little uh, petter petals and heart shapes um, and really felt excuse me just um, as I was creating it um, felt like it was really sculpting with the yarn like it just was it, I was seeing some kind of shapes emerging as I was working top down. Um, 
it was really exciting. So the purpose of it being top down was I was initially going to um, make it double layered. So make it the really long tube and um, invert and um, um, be just like super warm. It was it's already pretty warm being uh, brioche and like squishy or brioche style fisherman's ribs. So I didn't end up doing that. I was also on a timeline. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just going to do um, a basic like fisherman's rib hat. I wasn't going to do any fancy um, embellishments or different stitches. It was just going to be ribbed all the way down, big, long, and then double, doubled up and with a folded brim. And none of those things happened. The yarn just didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something different and I, I let it do that. So um, this one does, I used um, what I call a half Jenny bind off, which is kind of a take on the um, surprisingly stretchy bind off. Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, um, and this one, I only you only do the yarn over piece every other stitch, um, and it keeps it from kind of flaring out too much at the edge of the hat. So it you do go down a needle size as you get towards the bottom to keep it a little bit snug, um, and then do this uh, super stretchy bind off and bind off in pattern. So you're binding off um, still in that half fisherman's rib, um, alternating alternating when you're doing the yarn overs to make it stretchy. Um, the super uh, fisherman's rib piece is already pretty stretchy. So anyway, that's that one. The other one is this um, I called the full of love fidget muff. Um, this was a kind of passion project and is part of um, when I design certain things, um, I am keeping both individuals in mind, but also um, how the item is actually going to be used. And one of the things that I strive for is inclusivity, um, both in sizing. So for example, uh, the Rose Window Beanie, which is my design, uh, is modular kind of so it's each of these sections um if you have it to if you work up to gauge works up to about two inches of two inches well, let me put a little bit less than that i think <clears throat> uh, two inches of a finished circumference around the head. So uh, you can add or subtract repeats to get a bigger size um, or smaller size. But then this pattern is also written um, with some of the charts abbreviated or elongated to make uh, a truly size inclusive pattern. This goes all the way from newborn sizes um, so the baby sizes are like newborn, uh, zero, uh, three to six months, up to I think five years, and then five years to teenagers is a children's size, and that is again the actual like depth of the hat is a little bit taller, um, and then the tallest one is the adult sizes, and again then you can take that adult size and um, make the circumference as as big or as small as you need it. Um, so size inclusive is really important to me. But the other thing that's really important to me is um, making things that are, that serve a purpose and that serve a purpose um, for different individuals. So in this particular case, um, the twiddle muff or fidget muff is uh, designed for uh, an adult who has some cognitive disabilities. And this is an individual who's very near and dear to me. So this was designed for a uh, individual with some, some cognitive disabilities and uh, non nonverbal. They kept chewing on their hands and um, which can be both a sign of nervousness or um, boredom or any number of things. But anyway, their hands were getting um, cold as well. So we chew on them and then, then they get quite cold. Um, so this was kind of, uh, an attempt to ha have that service. Uh, they don't wear mittens and gloves very easily. They, those things, um, can be bothersome. And so I wanted something super 
soft and inviting and engaging. So both kind of meeting that that oral um, need with having these silicone beads. They are food grade silicone beads. Um, they're uh, chew safe for toddlers, uh, little little babies teething. You can make um, chew necklaces and stuff out of them. Um, but then also for <clears throat> this individual as well. So then the the whole thing is um, has some texture on the inside, which is designed to uh, be inviting. So interesting. What's this? Um, oh, there's some texture here. There's some texture here. I'm going to put, put my hands in. Oh, there's a lot of texture in the middle. Um, and then as I'm looking at it on the outside, I can pull on this. I can chew on this. I can, um, you know, get my fingers kind of underneath those beads. Um, and then um, the colors are meant to be high contrast, visually interesting. <laughs> Immediately, my toddler, before I even finished it, no, I had just finished it, I was taking the final photographs, was like, ooh, <laughs> what's this? And starts grabbing at it. So um, this is also something that could be very engaging for, uh, for young kiddos, again, with those high contrast um, visual interests for, for their brains and brain development, um, but also designed in mind um, for uh, adults with cognitive disabilities and it's both practical with keeping their hands warm again we live in a spot where um, winter does get quite cold and they aren't necessarily outside all the time but you got to go outside sometimes you got to go to doctor's appointments or visits with family etc um, and I, I, I wanted to do it well um, I wanted to do a full pattern um, fully written, fully charted, um, using all the best tips, te techniques, etc., um, and do due diligence to, um, this project and not just as like a, you know, a, th a throwaway. This, this individual and this need in the, in the community is something that the knitting community can meet. Um, that's, that's one of the things that I really love about knitting is, um, that you can make anything, that you can adjust anything, you can adjust any pattern, um, you can modify it to meet your own needs. However, you shouldn't have to. There should be the existence of knitting patterns that are specifically designed um, for individuals, for individuals with disabilities, for individuals with medical um access needs. Um, so that's one thing that I will be working on at some point as I get into um, garment design is um, making sure that there are things that are easy to put on for <clears throat> individuals who might not have full mobility in arms or hands, uh, making sure that there are uh, designs that are, um, I'm really excited about this one. I have one in the works. Um, for medical devices that are attached to the body, but you still need access to. Um, and I have kind of a, like a dual pocket thing that I'm, I'm working on, um, uh, that I'm really excited about. Um, and I hope, <laughs> I hope it works. Um, but yeah, just that, that these are, these are needs that we should be designing for as well. Um, size inclusivity is, is great. I'm glad, I'm super glad. Um, I am a plus size person. And I'm super glad that um, that patterns exist that grade to um, all sizes and that grade to fit all sizes, not just, you know, expand forever, um, but actually expand purposefully. So if you don't think about, you know, the depth this way and all you've thought about is circumference, you've, you've missed the mark on a baby hat from an adult hat. You know, you, you do have to make adjustments in other areas um when you grade things so that's my <laughs> that's my rant passion project um kind of little sneak peek of things uh that i'm excited for the blitz art hat is a free pattern at the moment um for a limited time uh the fidget muff full of love fidget muff is um is not currently a free pattern um I think it needs its day in the sun. It's it's kind of a 
uh, it deserves it. It deserves to be a real pattern. It deserves to to um, be purchased lovingly for an individual that you're going to make it for. Um, so <laughs> thanks for hanging in with me if you stuck around this long. Um, if you would love to put in the comments uh, your favorite pattern that is accessible in some way, or if you have an accessibility need or consideration that I should um, take into mind as I'm designing, um, let me know. Uh, I, I have some individuals that I am I have in mind that I'm working with that I design for, um, but I am happy to have my worldview expanded and have a greater understanding of of needs from knitwear. So wishing you a wonderful day. A happy new year because I totally forgot that <laughs> in my new year wrap up. It wasn't new year yet. And so it was I just out of sight, out of mind. I just sight. I just sight out of mind. <laughs> so I hope you have a lovely day and let's go out and create.